Hello, I'm Mr. Hargrave, and I'm addicted to Marvel Strike Force. And in this episode of Marvel Strike Force, I'm going to be showing you what teams you need and how big they need to be to beat the hardest raid in the entire game. That's right, we're going to be having a look at the Incursion Raid 2, Difficulty 3, and I'll be weighing in on whether it's still worth it to build Pegasus and Bifrost, which players should be doing that and who should be ignoring that. We're going to have a look at the blog, all of that and more, as well as a Cosmic Crucible recap. But first, a word from our sponsor. This video is being sponsored by Scarlet Spider Comics. This toe-sucking, piece-of-crap, low-life dirtbag stole their comics. The good news is you can help them and it won't cost you a dime. All you have to do, scan that QR code or click the link down below. It's going to get you a free $15 credit to use with Scarlet Spider Comics. There are no strings attached. I would not attach strings to this. I'm not the kind of person to be attaching strings, okay? I am telling you that with this QR code or with this link down below, you will get a free $15 that you can use on whatnot any way you see fit. Now, shipping rates will apply. However, shipping rates are usually pretty low, especially with Scarlet Spider Comics. They run auctions every Friday at midnight, midnight giveaway auctions. They are giving away free comics. I am not fucking with you. I'm not kidding with you. You would think, oh, there's probably some catch. There's no fucking catch. It's free comics, okay? This isn't some fly-by-night bullshit, guys. Scarlet Spider Comics has been supporting this show for literally years. You don't even have to show up to the auction to use the credit. If you go to the show that is coming up next and you go to the shop, and then you go to buy now, it'll show you their extensive inventory of comics, and it's showing up very poorly on the screen. But if you go there, you can see the covers and the prices, and you can see there's lots of comics here for under $15. And I know a lot of you have already collected that credit, Please, if you've already collected the credit, go use it. Until you use it, it doesn't benefit Scarlet Spider Comics. And it also helps support the channel. But you know what? Because I heard about this incident with the robbery, I am actually going to be giving all of the proceeds that would go towards me normally over to Scarlet Spider Comics. So go help them out. Um, and, and you know what? It'll just do us all good because what a crappy thing to happen to nice people. It is blog time, but uh, make sure you use those links down below and either claim that $15 credit or if you've already claimed it, make sure you use it. Let's help out Scarlet Spider Comics. But here is our weekly blog. Now they've already redone the raid season rewards. Uh, that, that Actually, that's coming in game on the 17th, but I don't know what they're going to be. Okay, I don't know what the next season of raid rewards are going to be. I hope that they are good. Right now it's like Spider-Man Big Time is in there. So I guess there's going to be a way to farm Big Time Spider-Man outside of raids, which is great because he's a useless character now. I don't know. It's really weird. On the 18th, that is today, uh, Monday, there's going to be a Firestar Blitz. There's a bunch of events starting. If you want the math on that, check out that video that me and Big Positive Geek put out on Friday. And make sure you follow him because there's going to be a lot of updates to that video because it was all fucked up when we got it. But it's a fun video. Lots of ranting. If you enjoy Mr. Hargrave rants, make sure you check out that video. At the end, we rant for like, I don't know, it's the, long, it's the longest rant we've ever put on one of those because these events are fucked up. Uh, Dark Dimension 7 begins on March 20th for fucking who? Like 10 people? Yay! 10 guys who get to start Dark Dimension 7 on the fucking 20th. And uh, that's that's it. That's the fucking blog? Oh, these goddamn anniversary events are going to keep going and they're just like fucking nonsense and convoluted and fucking stupid. I don't know about you, but I am not having a good time with this anniversary. I think it's a bunch of bullshit. They're still pushing this legacy reel. I think that's fucking stupid. The free-to-play release method for Cosmic Ghost Rider. We won't know if it's good until after it's over, and it's already bad because the showcase ended before the free-to-play method for Cosmic Ghost Rider arrived. So it all fucking sucks, and I'm pissed because it's Cosmic Ghost Rider, and I still don't have him, and I don't know... If what I'm going to get. I have no idea. It's some kind of arena, blitzing, incursion energy, shit show. So good luck. There's a Friday free claim. And, uh, oh, look, we're going to try to help out new players 
but still not in any really meaningful way, you got to give them more experience points. Remember when they took a small amount of new players and gave them a shit ton of experience points? Yeah, that happened. Now they should do it for all the new players. That's the update that we want. Everything else is stupid. And then the Players Voice Council is running another uh, rigged election uh, so that uh, Krakens can have more say uh, than ever before. Look, this game is going down the fucking tubes and I'm here watching it and you're watching it with me. Keep digging. So the first, you know, raid team that we got in the cycle was um, we were looking at Rebirth, right? Rebirth got kicked out. Now, then we got Bifrost. It's going to get kicked out. And then Pegasus. So Pegasus has a limited lifespan. Yes, it's very good. I like that it's useful inside raids. I like that it's useful as a cosmic crucible defense. I'm going to use it right now. I just launched the incursion raid difficulty three, and we're going to go check out the tech nodes and Pegasus is going to crush them. So I don't know how long Pegasus has left. As soon as they launch a new raid, though, I assume they're going to phase out Bifrost and probably Pegasus as well. So the clock is ticking. Yes, they're a very good team. Um, but no, I, I don't really think new players should go after them. And probably I wouldn't suggest new players go after Bifrost either for the same reason. They're getting phased out. Bifrost even less than Pegasus, even less useful than Pegasus really to new players. But a little more available. I like how they just like give you Loki. Vol is going to hold value. Um, I like how they give you Kestrel and Kestrel is going to hold value. So there's that. But I don't know. I think there's less utility for for less of Pegasus once it has left the meta than you're going to have for uh, for Bifrost. I think Bifrost, uh, the pieces are going to hold up a little better. Vol, Loki... It's kind of hard to get them out of the meta and and their spot in the new player journey. Um, but, you know, Kestrel's rooted in there as well. However, I think Pegasus will be falling off very soon. But not tonight. Tonight, we're doing difficulty three. Let's go. Um, I don't really sim these nodes. As soon as we started doing difficulty two, I really stopped trying to sim the nodes. Sometimes I'll sim the boss node because it doesn't really matter. Somebody else can pick it up if I fail, but um, I've, I've really been playing through making good decisions. I've brought most of this team up to level 99. I'm kind of slow rolling on Bifrost. I took Val up to 99. I took Sylvie up to 99. The rest of them are sitting at 95, right? Pegasus, I'm going to level 100 on the whole team because it's more useful. But, you know, caveats and whatnot. Like, just be aware that these teams are going to age out. They're not going to be forever teams. We're not looking at, like, a Secret Defenders. A Secret Defenders is top 10 and is going to stay top 10 for months and months and months, maybe the rest of the year. You know, Bifrost and Pegasus. Pegasus, is it top 10 now? Yes. Will it be top 10 tomorrow? Maybe not. I don't know. I don't know how long it's got. I invested pretty early, so I'm okay. If I had to start investing in it now, and if I wasn't running the Incursion Difficulty 3, like, make no mistake, if you're running the Incursion Difficulty 3, then you're building Pegasus to level 100. There's no way around it. I'm hoping to not have to build my whole Bifrost to level 100 to deal with this difficulty. So right now, I'm going to be very happy if this level of Bifrost is able to handle this because I don't want to build my Bifrost any more than I have. I'll probably take Sylvie to level 100. I'll take Val to level 100. I made my own case for Loki. I do keep using him. He is an interesting character with some interesting utility. Beta Ray Bill is a heavy hitter, so he's interesting. Team Loki is dog shit, right? I'm not interested in building Team Loki at all, but we'll see where it takes me. All right, I got to get rid of these Kestrels. There's no point in throwing up the Loki ultimate when the Kestrels are out because they just zap. They zap the duplicates uh, right out of the air before they even land. And we're holding up really, really well, though. I'm actually rather happy with how we're doing here. It looks like this level of Bifrost is going to be fine for the difficulty three. 
But we'll see. It's early on. It's only node one. It's only node one, people. We got a lot of nodes to go, including a boss node. I'll probably sim the boss node because the boss node you're just going to time out on. All right. Do should I hit the vault ultimate or not? Or should I save it for the next node? I'm going to save it for the next node. Because I feel like I already have this beat. I'm definitely going to save the Sylvie ultimate. That's really nice to open up the node with. And who am I going to get rid of? Let's get rid of magic. I like Loki. Loki's great. Loki is really cool in this game. I got this beta ray bill to deal with. Oh, my beta ray bill. I, I meant this... Uh, Black Bolt to deal with, and then my Beta Ray Bill dies. You know what? I'll just bring him back. I'll save myself some heals. I'll use the Vol Ultimate. What the hell? We'll bring Beta Ray Bill right back. You know, there's a good reason to hold hold the Vol Ultimate until you got to bring somebody back. And now I don't have to do any heals. On difficulty three. It's a big reason why you want to play it on manual right there. I don't know if I'll ever possess the confidence to sim out these uh, mystic nodes. Because I've had it fail on lower difficulties. I had this fail on difficulty zero. So trying to sim it on difficulty three, probably a recipe for disaster. This has increased my screen time. I'm an idiot, by the way. I don't recommend going to the highest, hardest raids and being in alliances that do that. You are ruining your own life by doing that. It's an asshole move. Difficulty three is for assholes. I'm an asshole. These are the facts. It's not a good idea. It is a much better idea to play on a lower difficulty where you can just sim all the way through it. Why suffer? I'm not going to get that much further ahead than anybody else. It's not going to happen. All right, I want to hit the most amount of people with this, so I'm going to go down the middle. And I really want to get rid of that Archangel. I want to get rid of that Nemesis. What I want is a big Beta Ray Bill Ultimate. Oh, beautiful. Here comes the Beta Ray Bill Ultimate. There we go. Spreading death and destruction to all. Bifrost is still a really cool raid team, but it's going to go. It'll be out of here sooner rather than later. This will be your first raid team to drop off, and it's a damn shame because it's still working great. And let's stun. I'm going to stun uh, Robbie Reyes so I don't take that passive damage. That passive damage is awful. Oh, I took the ultimate from Nemesis. He hit like a wet noodle, though, so it didn't matter. Didn't matter. Doesn't matter at all. And we will delete Archangel. What's nice is the Loki special gets really good. <laughs> the harder the raid gets, the better the Loki special gets. Because they just delete each other. It's kind of fun. And we'll go down the middle here. We'll go on Robbie Reyes and hopefully get rid of him. And we'll be set up really well for the boss. And I think I will be confident enough to sim the boss. Otherwise, if I try to play through the boss, I'll just time out. So I don't want to do that. Get rid of that beast. Get out of here, beast. I don't want beast to revive anybody. I don't want Captain Carter to revive anybody either. I want no revives. All right, there we go. We've got this. And let's go ahead and auto basic our way out of this, hopefully. I don't think, I don't see this going sideways in any way, shape, or form. Oh, Beta Ray Bell again. Come on, knock it off, Beta Ray Bell. If Beta Ray can get one more turn, those regenerations will bring him. I might have to heal him. Yeah, I'm going to have to heal Beta Ray Bill. That's okay. Not a big deal. Easy. I'd say difficulty three is easy. I mean, it's a pretty big Bifrost, but they're not level 100. 
And they're not even all tier 18. Let's go have a look at that Bifrost before I run the node. I want to show you. Oh, and I don't even get to do the boss. My lane mate already took it down. That's fine. I'm, I assume I could have simmed it. Because that's what I was doing on difficulty too. But let's have a look at that Bifrost. I want to show you what was doing that. So this is the Bifrost. And it's not huge. I got a couple. Of, I got a diamond on Vol, a diamond on Sylvie. Level 99 on Vol, 99 on Sylvie. But then 95 on Beta Ray Bill, Loki, uh, and Team Loki. Seven red stars, of course. I don't even have Isotope 8 level 5 on all of them. I've got it on a few of them, but not all of them. Tier 4s are maxed out. Tier 18 on Vol. Tier 17 on Sylvie. 17 on Beta Ray Bill. 17 on Team Loki. And 16 on Loki himself. So there it is. There's all you need to do to do the hardest difficulty there is on the Incursion Raid with your Bifrost. Now let me go ahead and show you my Pegasus before we run this. The team of the hour, right? The Pegasus. Now Pegasus, I'll go to the moon with right now because it's such a good Cosmic Crucible defensive team. If it's big enough, all these guys out there saying, I beat Pegasus easy on defense. Pegasus is an easy win. Well, those guys start getting shut the fuck down, the bigger your Pegasus gets because they usually try to nuke it with Icarus. And at a certain level, Icarus don't work no more. So that's why I've been building my Pegasus to astronomical levels is to shut down the Icarus bros, which is kind of funny to see happen on my Cosmic Crucible results when Icarus starts eating shit in mass. So here they are. They're all going to level 100. I've got a diamond on Iron Man Infinity War. A lot of people like to put diamonds on Kestrel. We're going to see if I need it or not. Uh, they're all tier 18. I don't know where else to throw tech gear, so I threw it here. And I'm still missing a star on Ironheart. I'm still only six stars on Ironheart, so I'm looking forward to getting the final star on her at some point. All right, let's go into the Incursion Raid. And let's go through with Pegasus. Once again, I'm going to play this manual. Now, Pegasus, I have a little more faith that I could probably just sim through this. But for today, definitely for the purposes of this video... I want to test this out. I want to play it manually. I don't. I, I, I if it goes wrong, I want to see it go wrong. So let's see what this does. But I'm more confident in this than I was in Bifrost. Bifrost, I thought there was a chance I was going to have to build that team up. But I'm happy that I don't. I won't touch it. I know if I did build it all the way to level 100 and gear tier 18, I could probably sim through it every day and save myself a lot of time, but I'm not going to do that. I'd rather save the gear and spend the time playing through the nodes. It didn't take that long. All right, we are going to stun Spider Weaver, although I probably should have stunned um, Gambit, but I don't know. They're both stun worthy. Maybe we'll just take out Gambit. I like the Pegasus nodes. They're a little faster, I think. At least that's how they feel to me. There's less enemies. I don't know. Bigger team, so they hit harder. I don't know why everybody makes um, Iron Man a striker. Everybody makes Iron Man Infinity War a striker. And when I went to go put level 5 Isotope 8 on him, I thought about joining the crowd. And I was like, no. I mean, why are people doing that? It's for the basic, for the follow-up attack. But it doesn't really make any sense. He doesn't. He's going to kill everyone anyways. Outside of raids, which is more important, you want him to be able to land that ability block. If he can't land that ability block outside of raids, he kind of sucks. So in the interest of being able to land this ability block, plus you hardly ever use the basic anyways, because he... Uh, he charges up his energy so goddamn fast. So it just doesn't make any sense to me why every, like, almost like over 90% of players have him as a fucking striker. And I just, I cannot, I thought about it good and long and hard. And yeah, my chat is confirming the ability block on Cosmic Crucible defense is like clutch. It's like the whole thing. He's got to land it. So that extra 50% focus, it matters. 
And it's going to matter more as the team phases out. And you see here, I could wipe this whole team with his ultimate. And if he does his basic, they're just going to die. They don't need a turn bar rewind. They're already dead. Why do you need to rewind someone's turn bar who's dead? That's what I don't understand about doing that. It doesn't make any sense to me. They are literally already dead, guys. You don't need to reduce their turn bar if they're dead. Whoever Iron Man Infinity War is hitting with this basic is going to die anyways because of the assist. So I don't get it. Like, it's a cool idea, and it makes sense on paper, but in actuality, you want the ability blocks to land. Anytime a character has an ability block that doesn't have some insane boost of focus on it, or a stun, or a blind, you probably want the extra focus so it fucking lands. I don't get the idea of making characters that need focus to do their shit, turning them into strikers, for, I don't know, damage that they don't need. But you guys keep doing you, I guess. I, I don't know. Fuck, it's working for me. I mean, I think we can all agree that outside of raids, he's better as a skirmisher. And inside of raids, they destroy everything anyways. So why are you worried about their performance in raids would be my, you know, question inside of raids they don't need extra damage they they go absolutely ape shit inside of raids people don't get turns yeah that 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 absorbing man i don't need to reduce his turn bar anymore now he's dead it's gone he's it's over right there was no point in reducing his like oh you got to reduce his turn bar why he's dead there's no point in it. He's removed from the board. But anyways, I'm sure somebody in my comments will make a really good point that I will not read. So please leave those. It's it's amusing for me that you do that. Um, God bless you. I, I need your help on the al algorithm, although it doesn't really matter anymore at this point. Nothing matters anymore. And yeah, in difficulty three, I want that ability block to land. And these uh, these guys are getting a lot of folk, a lot of resistance at this level. All right, I'm going to try to get rid of this cloak. I don't know if I can get rid of this cloak. I probably can get rid of that cloak. And now I got to get rid of these um, Omega Reds before they hit me. Oh shit! Okay, I can just bring her back. I lost Iron Heart, but uh, Rescue can just bring her right back. And then, damn. I'm actually going to hit the ability block on Omega Red instead of the ultimate with uh, Iron Man. So I resist. So I don't get hit with that uh, ability block. I don't want it. I do not want the ability block. And I'm just going to try to kill the other Omega Red. I don't like it. No, sir, I don't. And I'm going to hit him with the ultimate. He does not want to die. Oh, my God. He is thick at this level. Okay, I can stun him here. The difficulty three, these Omega Reds get serious. All right, now we'll do the Iron Man Ultimate. Brilliant. See, everybody's dead enough. I don't need to reduce turn bar, guys. The turn bar, it doesn't, everyone's dead. There's no reason to worry about it. I'm going to harp on this a lot because I really thought, I thought about it for like, an hour last night. I literally stared at it for an hour before I did the uh, before I did the change, and I was like, "Is there any reason to make this guy a, stri a striker? Is there any point to that? Any realistic point to that?" And there was none. And I really had to think about it because I was staring at like a number there. Jarvis was like ninety seven percent sure that he should be a fucking striker, and I'm like, "Are ninety seven percent of the people wrong?" Yes, yes, 97% of the people are wrong, dead wrong. But it's not really surprising. It's like, you know, a dipshit. And I'm, I'm saying I'm a dipshit as well. When I say a dipshit content creator, please don't think that I'm, th 
think of them le- like I think of them as lowly or whatever or lesser than me. No, I'm a dipshit as well. A dipshit content creator says some dipshit thing to make a fucking video. Oh, well, strike her on, uh, you know, Iron Man. And then everybody puts strike her on Iron Man Infinity where without using their fucking brains. And that's how we end up with 97% of people putting the wrong isotope, the wrong isotope aid on Iron Man. Because you could put any fucking isotope you want on Iron Man. I don't know. But I'm pretty confident in skirmisher on him to the point where I, I locked it in an isotope eight level five. All right, so let's go for the boss. Uh, I'm going to spend the cores. Look, I'm doing it for the content tonight, boys. And we are going to sim through it. I'm confident they can just sim through it. What are you going to do? Are you going to shut me down or are we going to do an X-Men node? I'm not going to heal him. Let's win. It's going to time out on the sim. All right, there it goes. So no problems whatsoever. Pegasus blows right through the hardest raid. Uh, so that's some good information for you. If you're thinking about building by Frost or Pegasus, are you going to do the Incursion Raid 2 Difficulty 3 soon? If you're going to do it soon, then build them. If you're not, then don't. Ignore them. But if you're going to build them, if you're going to be doing the Incursion Raid 2 Difficulty 3, Fucking build them because they work on it. And you're going to have to build them at a high level. All right. Extreme X-Men is a fucking no-brainer. They are a better team than Pegasus on in every way, shape, and form. So you're going to need to build them regardless. Um, but I think you are going to need to play them manually. Now, my Extreme X-Men team is 2.3 million. I don't think I'm going to break them down. I'm, I'm not going to go into the screen, but... They're almost all level, uh, they're all level 99. They're all going to be level 100. They're a, they're an even better defensive team than Pegasus. So no one's debating building them. They are fucking stellar. Let's go. Let's see. Um, I haven't really got to play these nodes very much, so I don't have a lot of experience with them. So I'm curious about this. All right. This is definitely their node. We're going to remove all that revive once with Cyclops. Who are we going to stun? I feel like we're going to need to stun Quicksilver. We're going to stun out Quicksilver. We're going to get a whole bunch of turn bar. Who do we want to ability block? Um, oh, my. I can't even see everybody. I'm going to ability block Vol. I don't even know. All right. And then we are going to hit the ultimate with Cyclops. All right. Get rid of all that revive once or most of the revive once. Some of it stays. Some of the fucking revive once stays because it does a resistance check of all fucking things. All right. Let me try to ability block Quicksilver. I don't know. Kind of screwed. I knocked him under health. There was no way to avoid it. And... I want as much of, I want to hit as many people as I can with this Forge Ultimate. And I'm just going to eat those Quicksilver attacks is what I'm going to do. Oh, all right. Sunspot's barely hanging in there, but we're making it. This is an ugly, ugly fight. These nodes were made fucking hard. I mean, these, they had to make these nodes so fucking hard that they beat Apocalypse. That's how fucking hard these nodes are. They overdid these nodes. All right, ultimate with Gambit. Let's go. We got three diamonds on Gambit, so we're definitely cheating there. We are a thousand percent. Then the good thing about Extreme X Men is my stars are not maxed on Nightcrawler, Sunspot, and Forge, so they're going to get bigger when that happens, which is good because they need it. And then we are going to drop this. I'm going to drop this ability block on Absorbing Man because he's about to take a turn. Maybe. No, I couldn't land that ability block on Absorbing Man. The resistance is off the chain, guys. What the fuck? I tried to drop an ability block on Absorbing Man. He straight resisted it from a three diamond gambit. What the fuck? That's insane. These nodes are no fucking joke. Dude, if you don't have the team, like, don't even fuck with it. All right, I'm going to stun Deathpool. 
hiding out over there. I see you, Deathpool. I'm going to stun your ass. Um, I am not going to use the ultimate with uh, Sunspot because I want to save it. Like an asshole, I want to save it. Because we're almost done here. We've done very, very well. I'm going to put that ability block on Sam? Yes, I did land the ability block on Sam. And let's see if we can kill this Absorbing Man. Absorbing Man will not die. All right, die Absorbing Man. I got to worry about this Fire Star over here. I think Gwenpool's going to die to those bleeds. Or an assist. I can't ability block that fire star okay i'm gonna kill that fire star i'm not really worried about an ability block captain sam he's not really on my on the front of my mind i don't really care about that at all i'm really just trying to save up my abilities this has gone very very well this team is holding up remarkably well as you know i would have figured this isn't a surprise Hive Mind is fantastic, by the way. The one team I still sim with on the previous difficulty, on difficulty two, was Hive Mind. I didn't worry about it at all. It just sims through everything, even at low stars. And I'll show you my Hive Mind, which I'm confident is going to be fine on the bio nodes. Now, in Invaders does not work on the skill section at all. At all. Invaders is fucked now. So I'm really hoping the new skill team comes out sooner rather than later. Because Invaders is full fucked. Full fucked. All right, there it is, boys. There it is. I love it. That was great. There it is. And I think that's going to do it for us. My rate attacks are costing too many cores now, but... You can kind of get the idea of what difficulty three is all about and what I'm going to be dealing with on a daily basis. Let me show you that hive mind so you kind of get a benchmark for what it is and what it does. Um, so this is the hive mind that I have. I did buy an offer for Gwenham. I, I bought like a $20 offer on Gwenham. So this isn't entirely free to play, but you know, it's, it's approaching that. I did put three diamonds on Carnage. That's kind of a big dick baller move. Everybody's level 99 except for Venom. I don't know, man. I like Venom on the team. I just, I'm not 100% sold on bringing them to the moon. Maybe I will someday. Did tier 18 on most of them except for Venom. Isotope 8 level 5 on everybody. I bet everybody had the wrong fucking isotope on Red Goblin too, right? Or did we finally figure it out? Nope, we didn't figure it out. People are sticking fucking Raider on Red Goblin. Why the fuck are we putting Raider on Red Goblin? He's a fucking striker. It's a fucking striker. Why is he a Raider? What is he doing? This attack's unavoidable. It's not unblockable. What the fuck are you doing? Does he get anything if he crits? Is there some shit that he does if he gets a critical hit? Where the what where's the where's the magic shit that he does when he gets a critical hit? That would be the other thing that would make me turn a character into a a raider is if they did magical shit on crit. But they don't. He doesn't. He doesn't do anything magical on crit. Are any of his attacks none of his attacks are unblockable. Why wouldn't you want him to hit again with the Goblin Assault? Why wouldn't you want him to do more damage and follow up with more bleeds? Why would you want to do Raider? Fuck, it would be better to have him as a skirmisher to drop more bleeds on the fucking field. Like, I don't understand that. I don't get it. How many people have done that? How fucking confident is the community in this? 91% of players have made the wrong decision, in my opinion. Weird. I mean, be, Raider and Skirmisher are pretty equal. It's not really, like, it's not as big of a debate as the Striker-Skirmisher debate, which gets really weird. 
Like I'd back down. If you want to make him a Raider, I, that's fine. But I was very confident in striker for Red Goblin. I, I don't know, man. The problem is, is if you got any deflect out there, you can't crit, guys. You drop all that damage bonus. It goes away. So any damage you're getting from Raider can be negated by some fucking deflect, which is like everywhere. Everybody's got deflect. And nothing special happens here on critical hit. It's not like Bifrost where if you get critical hit, somebody on the team like smacks someone around. That doesn't happen here. It's not like... Uh, back in the day with Shatterstar and Longshot where they got critical hits and they got barrier and turn bar and shit. No. I don't know, man. I just think it's people not reading. They're just they're just taking the advice of someone who made a fucking bad decision and doesn't know how to read. Ah, it's my it's my two cents on it. We could start with the broken event. So I'm here to stream Marvel Strike Force, and it's literally broken. So I can't say I'm very excited to check this out. All right. Apparently some members of chat are con I mean, look, I'm not saying I'm going to get stuck on it. But what part of it is pretty good? Are you serious or are you uh, taking the piss? I feel like you're taking the piss. Yes, the black... How do you not know the black... What happens to this community if I don't talk to it for a week? What happens to this community if I don't talk? How do you not know that this is pay to win? How is this not clear that this is pay to win? Who the fuck got confused? The only way to get the black cat costume is to spend like $200, maybe $100 at the least. Yes, it's pay to win. How the, how the fuck didn't we see that coming? Yes, that's the case. Though I do feel less stupid now for buying three diamonds on Namor because apparently all they're giving out for free is one diamond and it's not free. It's like $100. But anyways, I'm, I'm glad I could cover that for you, community. If anyone was confused about these events, yes, the only way to make progress in them is to buy offers. Expensive offers, not even cheap offers, not even reasonable offers, like insane offers. Fifty to a hundred dollar offers is the only way to make progress in these shitty events. Which, unless you spend like you know a hundred dollars, you don't even get any good rewards from. And then even if you spend all the dollars, you get like I don't know a shitty costume. Like who gives a fuck? I don't care. Look, I'm into dark evil shit, but I don't really give a shit. I don't care. All of that is, it's pointless. I don't give a fuck. All right, so people are excited that at least the uh, thing's given out. All right, here's the, here's the rise of the cabal. Let's check out the test drive. This is the one that's broken. So this is, you know, it's got issues. And it's all RNG and it's stupid. I mean, the good news is, is there's no energy here. You can play it as many times as you want until you beat it. But the one thing it doesn't do is actually showcase the team because it throws Cabal. Look, it even has the fucking description wrong. It says it's going against Young Avengers and it's fucking secret defenders. Like, they don't give a shit, guys. Yeah, here is Cabal versus the Spiders and it's Young Avengers. Here is Cabal versus the actual Spiders and then it has no description. What the fuck? All right, so anyways... Um, Oh, I have to beat Cabal versus the Spiders. Okay, I got it. And you got to beat the Young Avengers one to get this one. Sorry, I'm misreading. They they did everything perfectly. I'm the idiot. All right, anyways, let's go check out Test Drive 1 and, and, and throw Cabal against uh, this team, which is totally a team that you find in Cosmic Crucible. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, This. how many times have you guys run into this team in Cosmic Crucible? And then, yeah, they tell you to use Cabal with fucking Kang and Doom for fuck's sake. Like, is this really the suggested team? So I'm going to run Cabal. I can't even remove 
and I'm gonna run fucking Doom as a as a goddamn fortifier? What the fuck? Who the fuck runs Doom as a fortifier? What the hell is going on? I swear to fucking God, so goddamn shit brained. I can't even handle this shit. Ridiculous. What's it gonna show you? What's it gonna show you? It's gonna show you that Kang is good. Fuck. Now I will say that with with on the test server when I'm testing out Cabal, the team that the two characters I liked best with them are fucking Kang and Titania. It just makes Masters of Evil better. It makes Masters of Evil more better. You take the best members of Masters of Evil and uh, you throw them with Cabal and then you have an unstoppable team and you don't put Doom on it. You literally do not use Doom on it. Like there's no fucking point in Doom. This team wins in one turn. Doom is not going to get to do shit. There's no reason to put them on this team. It's absurd. Fucking absurd. See, Doom is not even taking a turn. There's no fucking point in it. Especially if you're running Kang with it, for fuck's sake. This is stupid. It's the dumbest shit ever. Good event, my ass. This is, this is, I mean, you know, the shards are good. I get that. New players love that. Free, free shards of Namor is good. So I like that. Holy crap. All right, let's go. Let's go check out this. Another team which we all run into in Cosmic Crucible, uh, Young Avengers, right, guys? Everybody runs into the Young Avengers in Cosmic Crucible. Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah, all the time I got to fight these massive Young Avengers teams. What teams can we guarantee to find in Cosmic Crucible? Infinity Watch, Pegasus, right? Everybody fights an Infinity Watch and Pegasus. If you're going to put two teams down. Good Lord. What the fuck is this? It's not even a Cosmic Crucible team. They've thrown a fucking random stature in here. We have Miles. Instead of Kate Bishop, for fuck's sake, they can't even put a proper Young Avengers team on. Like, what the hell are you showing? What is the point? It doesn't make any sense. Oh, Cabal's so good. What the hell are you doing? The dumbest shit I've ever seen in my life. Good Lord. All right. Finally, there's a real team. However, when they go against secret defenders, they lose. <laughs> With this matchup, they lose. They literally fucking lose. So that's what I've been hearing. Everyone's been telling me uh, Node 3 is a pain in the ass because your Cabal, which we're supposed to be showcasing, will fucking lose which is madness. And there's like, I don't know, man, it's ridiculous. So stupid. So stupid. So this comes down to RNG. Like if your Kang gets uh, slowed down and ability blocked, you're kind of screwed. There comes in Black Cat. Oh, look, they gave Black Cat the costume just to rub that shit in. And the ability blocked my name more. Yeah, they're all, they're too slow. They get destroyed. They're blinded. Holy shit. Come on, guys. What are you doing? Doom sucks. Don't put Doom on this team. Doom is a wasted slot. He does nothing. He's going to hit his basic and that's it. Useless. Doesn't even get triggered. I mean, they made him a fortifier. Which is a horrible idea. That's like, the there, my fucking Kang is dead. Fucking Kang dies. <laughs> what is this bullshit? Hey, way to showcase the team, guys. I, you're going to sell this team like crazy. Everyone's going to want to use this in Cosmic Crucible. Wow, look at how great it is. Look at how great it is. Oh, yeah, it's doing wonderful. Hey, I think Doom might... Nope, Doom's dead. <laughs> I've showcased the team better than this. I've shown you how good Cabal is. 
So I know how good Cabal is. But if I didn't know that, if I wasn't on the test server testing this team right now, I would be telling you that this team sucks and not to invest in it. If I was going off of that test alone, I would convince you and you would be convinced to not invest in this team and to skip it. Barring some major buffs in season seven, right? It would have to have like major buffs in season seven. And I would certainly advise you against putting doom on it. Holy shit, guys. If you wanted to put doom on the team, give them the fucking tag and put them on the team. Why have you put doom on the team in such an unofficial way? Like why the fuck were you afraid to give doom a rework and a proper place on this team? team it's ridiculous fucking absurd all right at least now my kang gets a turn so i think if kang gets a turn you're gonna be okay this is funny because this is like uh this team is actually a cosmic crucible team this is the only team oh and doom miraculously gets a turn Doom gets a fucking turn. I swear to God, whoever the fucking guy is who comes up with this shit has fucking rocks for brains. And I don't care if I'm talking about someone that I like right now. Because every single one of these test drives has been flawed. The team compositions, the isotope eights have shown that whoever makes these doesn't give a single fuck or doesn't understand the basics of the game that they are working on. And I don't give a fuck if I'm talking about somebody I like because they need to hear it from somebody. They need to do better. They suck at this. Fucking hands down. I don't know who I'm talking about right now, whether it's some unpaid intern or a fucking high-level guy, but whoever the fuck it is, they suck at this. Like, you are very bad at your job, sir. You are either so fucking lazy, they checked out that you don't give a shit which isotope eights you're applying to your characters, what the formations are, uh, what teams they're going up against, what you're actually trying to showcase, or you are just wholly incompetent and have no understanding of the game whatsoever. I don't know which it is. It's, It's absolutely absurd. Every time, there's never been a good one. As far as I can remember, there's never been a fucking good one that actually shows off the team properly or is put together in a non-shitheaded way. And I'm sorry to be that blunt with whoever the fuck that person is. I, 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 I hesitate to speak that way because I might be talking about somebody I really like. But fuck it at this point. Like you've been so fucking negligent time and time again with this game mode, which is something that I requested a fucking feature that I literally requested to be in the game. I feel is here because of that. I raged about it endlessly for fucking years saying that when a team comes out, you should showcase the team. And yeah, here's the team winning, but only because like it's luck, it's fucking luck. And we really just showed that Kang's a good character is what we showed here. All we really did with this is show that Kang is really good. So I don't know, guys. Get better. Do better, for fuck's sake. Just do better. The Cabal theory crafting. Fill out Cabal team with your own villains. Wait, why don't we get to fill out the team with my own villains? Wait, do I get to theory craft? No, I don't even get to do what they said. Was the idea to actually let me theory craft? That would have been cool. Fill out Cabal team with your own villains and face powerful enemies. What the fuck? What the fuck? All right, so this is just broken. Even better, even better. Someone actually had a good fucking idea. They put a hard team, a hard actual Cosmic Crucible team on defense... And the goal was to let us pick the other two characters to add to Cabal to beat this team. And then they failed to program it. They failed to do... Who, someone else failed. Somebody finally had a good fucking idea and they fell on their goddamn face trying to achieve it. And it's got to be one of the easiest things to fucking do, you would think. I mean, who knows? They'll probably blame some kind of spaghetti code or some bullshit. But really, guys, honestly, 
So, yeah, the idea was to be able to pull Doom and Kang off of here. I mean, the, the fucking cr theory craft is you pull Doom out of here and then you throw in Titania. And Kang still wins because Cabal ain't that great. Maybe you throw in... Uh, I don't know. You have to adjust the speed. If you're not willing to give them speed, I don't know what you're going to do. Anyways, uh, they fucked it up. They fucked it up. It's insane. All right, so that's the amazing, uh, that's the amazing test drive that my uh, chat was so enamored with. <laughs> I'm sorry for picking on your chat, but look, you get what the hell are you talking about? The hell are you talking about? And that brings us to the part of the show where we go over our Cosmic Crucible results. Now, I did put out a standalone video on this where I kind of went over all of the changes that I had to make kind of mid-season as we approach like the last couple of weeks here for season six. And I moved over to a new defense of like secret defenders. And if you want to see this, go check out that video. I put it out a couple of days ago. It's called Unbeatable. That's the thumbnail on there. And uh, so I'm using secret defenders. These are my offense teams. They're still pretty much the same. My defense teams, I had to switch around as well. I'm still using Darkhold in room one. I'm using Heroic Asgardians and Dormammu in room two. New Avengers in room three. Extreme X-Men and Black Knight in four. Pegasus in five. Infinity Watch in six. Infinity Watch pulled off a seven-point turn bonus, which is like one of the lowest it's ever done this week. So it's still doing what it needs to do. Pegasus actually pulled off two wins back-to-back -back on defense, so I'm really happy with them. This Extreme X-Men and Black Knight pulled off a win each time, so it did very, very well. I'm not too pleased with my new Avengers team, although I don't really know what to do to improve it. It seems to be better than, uh, you know, it's better than War Dogs. It's better than... Um, it's about the same as just pure Extreme X-Men, if people know how to beat it. But yeah, I've been having this new Avengers team on there for a while. And I don't know, sometimes it can do better. I get like an 18-point turn bonus, but it can also give up a 26-point turn bonus. So it's not great. Heroic Asgardians and Dormammu, I'm very happy with. This used to be a um, kind of a Tangled Web hybrid team, which did get me a win. It will get me wins. But I feel like this is going to be more consistently uh, giving me a lower turn bonus. It's going to be doing more for me overall. And then uh, Darkhold is still doing great. It's been doing great since day one, giving up wins. I got another win with it this week. As far as my offense, I switched this up just a little bit. Not too much, though. Uh, Secret Defenders, Hive Mind, Sinister, uh, Superior, uh, Sinister Six, Superior Six, Masters of Evil, New Warriors, and Apocalypse Scroll. Actually, I don't think I changed it at all. But sometimes I've been moving around Apocalypse and Scroll and not having them on the same team. That's the biggest difference that I make is kind of moving Apocalypse and Scroll around on separate teams as I don't always need them to be together to do what they need to do. And uh, I've really been winning more on defense than on offense, and that's why I made a standalone video on it because it's kind of a new thing where normally I win just by putting up the higher numbers on offense, but this week it was a little bit different. I ended up doing a little better on defense. So definitely check out that video if you haven't already. There's lots of other great videos on this channel, so make sure you check them out. Thank you for joining us live or watching this recording. I'm sorry the video is a little shorter this week. There just isn't a lot to talk about when it comes to Marvel Strike Force, but we will keep trying as long as you keep digging.